take all of these three words. Oh. Bill of Rights 1688, there was nothing on the statute book to prevent the monarch from being a Roman Catholic. And we're going to investigate that one too, because there's something happening in the monarchy that involves this. And we're going to try and link you to it. But first, we're going to look into these, these words, see what they mean. James II. Sources, Commons Journal, 20th of January 1688, and it says, shortly after his accession in 1685, James II prorogued Parliament, which means it existed, but he never attended it. And although it was not dissolved until July 1687, it never met again, so it was bye bye. And it says, quote, the King James II, having endeavoured to subvert the constitution of the kingdom, which then was common law, by breaking the original contract between the king and the people, and by the advice of Jesuits and other wicked corporations, having violated the fundamental laws and having withdrawn himself out of this kingdom, which it was at the time, has abdicated the government and the throne is thereby vacant. All this bill did was ascertain succession of the Scottish and Germanic Protestant crown. That's all they did. It didn't really give you much at all. In fact, it decreased what you had. Because you, you took on a different definition. We all consent to things, don't we? Someone says, would you like this? Oh yeah, well, I'll have that. But, what does it mean? Well, it's a concurrence of wills, willpower, it's them against you. Express consent. Important word if you want to look at this one after. Is that directly given either viva voce or in writing? Viva voce is with your voice, this thing that you use every day. If you lose the power of your voice, you're reduced into writing and you've just entered into the most ridiculous circular you'll ever go into, which is civil law. It's just words and nonsense. So your voice, don't use it, your voice, don't lose it. Implied consent is that manifested by signs, actions or facts, or by inaction or silence, which raises a presumption that the consent has been given. So when someone sends you a letter, and you ignore it, it's implied consent. Unless you action it, uh, I, I would suggest putting it back in the post, uh, they, you are then replying it. Also, if you apply the rule of admiralty law, this thing has been sent from the sea, but it then lands on your doorstep. So don't let it land. Consent is an act of reason, accompanied with deliberation, as a sane adult would, some of compass mentors, with mind weighing as in a balance for good or evil on each side. In other words, whether it's beneficial for you or whether it's detrimental for you. I just don't like the religious connotations, these legalese things you use, because everything's good with God. But most of it is, you know, you have a bit of rationality towards it. Viva voce, <clears throat> with the living voice, by word, of, by word of mouth as applied to the examination of witnesses, this phrase is equivalent to orally. It is used in contradic contradistinction to evidence on affidavits or depositions, which is anything to good. As descriptive of a species of voting with your voice, it signifies voting by speech or outcry, which we should be outcrying what's going on at the moment. <laughs> I'm not being funny. I mean, what the banks are doing, this is outrageous. As distinguished from voting by a written or printed ballot. So in other words, when you reduce things into writing, you've just lost power. Vote. Everyone votes. Who, vo who voted in the last uh, selection? No. Uh, I mean, election? No one. No. Did you spoil your vote then? No. I hope you used it. Suffrage, the act of voting, the expression of his will, preference or choice formally manifested by a member of the legislative or deliberative body, in other words, your representative government MP, or of a constituency or a body of qualified electors in regard to the decision to be made by the body as a whole upon any proposed measure or proceeding, the majority vote, or the selection of an officer or representative, and the aggregate of the expressions or will of will of choice, in other words, the majority of the vote, if you count them, because you've built it, thus manifested by individuals is called the vote of the body. So, which one is more powerful for you when you want to vote? How would you, how would you wish to vote? 
，淨係無頭啊！以為細一半嘅 ，problems write that down to be ignored， 佢都唔 respond 啊！你問 ，rights， 他唔會講 rights。What is a right? A right signifies power. Big word, get to know it. Power. Privilege, faculty, or demand inherited in one corporation and incident upon another. Rights are defined generally as powers of free action. Think about that one. Giving the term a juristic content, which is what we're dealing with today with civil law, a right is a well defined as a capacity residing in one man of controlling. With the permission, with the agreement, and assistance of the state, the actions of others. Very interesting. I thought of that one. Natural rights are those which grow out of the nature of men and depend upon personality, which we've all got, as distinguished from such as as are created by law and depend upon civilized society. That word there, we're going to explore as well because that's quite an interesting phrase in itself. That one. In old English law, the term denoted an accusation or a charge of a crime, as in you've got the right to stay silent, <laughs> you've got the right to a solicitor, you have a right to a phone call. Liberty, freedom, exemption from extraneous control, the power of the will, your willpower, your voice, whatever you do, how you act in it. In its moral freedom to follow the dictates of its unrestricted choice, which we should be able to do, and to direct the external acts of the individual without restraint, coercion, or control from other corporations, I would go a bit further on that. I would say liberty is、uh, being free from death, but we'll go there a bit later. Liberty of speech, freedom accorded by the Constitution, all laws of the state to express opinions. The fact by word of mouth and control by any censorship or restrictions of government works nice in principle, but I don't think we actually have that today. You can get a license to go and free speech zone, but civil liberty, the difference, the liberty of a member of society. I'm going to, I'm going to test you at the end of this in part two. <coughs> member of society, remember, being a man's natural liberty so far restrained by human laws, as in man-made ones. And no further, as is necessary and expedient, which actually means immoral. <laughs> It can be deemed immoral for the general advantage of the public. Interesting word, expedient. Look up the definition. Liberty, which ideally you'd think that's a freedom of liberty, but it's not. It's actually a French Masonic statue given to America for creating the French, Re uh, the French Revolution, which America and Britain funded. So I find that ironic that that represents liberty. I giggle to myself often. <laughs> William, Mary, again, handsome looking devil. Subject. In constitutional law, which is what we deal with today, one that owes allegiance to a sovereign and is governed by his or her laws, which is common law. You are tied to the monarch by that name. Subject. The natives of Great Britain are subjects of the British government, which is a lie. It's not actually. In Scots law, the thing, which is the object of the agreement. So the best way I can describe this for you is: whenever you see subject, you're actually also a thing. Okay, we're going to see why. What's the Bill of Rights do? Well, Parliament presented the new King William of Orange with a Bill of Rights, described as an act declaring the rights and liberties of the subject. Before you had rights and responsibilities, now it's changed. You've got liberties of the subject. The Bill of Rights established that Parliament, important detail, not the King. Had ultimate authority to make or repeal laws. The Bill of Rights also asserted certain ancient rights and liberties of English slaves, <coughs> which we should call that, but what it is: persons or corporations subject to slaves or things. 
things make more sense if you've if used the right terminology. It's shocking and horrible. You know, makes things easier. First one, the right to petition the king and his or her government. Uh, no, that right's gone. You can't petition your king, you have to go through the crown, and you will meet lots of blockages. Or you'll get MPs writing you back saying, yeah, we've got your letter, yeah, we're, we're looking into it, but nothing will happen. Freedom of speech and debate in Parliament. You don't have to free speech, you have to get a licence, you have to apply to go to a free speech zone. So that's gone. Rights of English slaves to keep arms for their defence. Me and Ian was chatting about that before, about arms, uh, war on guns. You know, it's a fake war, but you have an ancient right to bear arms for your defence, whether it's a knife, whether it's a pair of, you know, razor blades, it doesn't matter. You have the right to de defend yourself, but with so many statute laws crucifying everyone for even just carrying, you know, a flip knife now, it's, uh, it's getting more impressive. Right to trial by jury, uphold statutes of Magna Carta, which is your you know, common law judge in front of peers to argue who's right or wrong and if there's any cost or injury involved. That's gone, because you're just paid money now. You will not get justice, because it's not the same system that Magna Carta is. Prohibitions on excessive bail, excessive fines, and cruel and unusual punishments. Well, whether I'm the only man that sees this, but does anyone else feel that financial terrorism is a cruel and unusual punishment? Are you? I thought so. I mean, it doesn't get any more bizarre than someone blackmailing you so you pay more tax. It doesn't get